We have some big news out of Apple. They have just acquired a new AI startup that was initially kind of looking at specializing in manufacturing components. And so people are like, ah, oh, whatever, this is probably just some sort of Apple Play, um, you know, where they're looking at just manufacturing stuff for the iPhone or whatever. But it seems like there's a lot more under the hood and it looks like Apple may have actually found a hidden gem that is gonna help them in the long term with some really impressive technology. So let's get into all of it. So the big news here is that they've, of course, added another AI acquisition. What I think is really funny is that it's so difficult for, like Apple's so secretive and so tight-lipped that it's actually very hard for people to figure out that this company even was acquired, uh, but some great journalists have you know been digging uh, doing a bunch of digging and they've essentially figured it out I'll, I'll show I'll explain why in a second it's kind of interesting but first off with the company um, this is based out of Canada it's Darwin AI and originally they kind of specialized in um, vision based tech and essentially this was you know looking at components during manufacturing to help them um, be more efficient um, Bloomberg did a whole report on on the company right so what's interesting here to me anyways, is that Apple and Darwin, neither of them have announced this deal. No one has said that they've been acquired. Um, but if you go on LinkedIn and look at the LinkedIn profiles of a whole bunch of the members of um, Darwin, they've all started to change their profiles to say that they've joined Apple's machine learning teams. And they actually started doing this back in January. So this deal probably went down and was solidified in January. Now, maybe they just went and poached a bunch of employees. So people are like, oh, maybe it wasn't an acquisition. Um, but uh, I think that, you know, there, so essentially what happened was BDC Capital, which was one of their investors. So uh, Darwin, I think they raised over $15 million in funding. Um, they did a couple rounds to, to get there, but they had uh, BDC Capital's Deep Tech. Um, uh, they had Honeywell Ventures. They had Obvious Ventures and then also Innova Capital. Anyways, all of them invested. Everyone's been really tight lipped. But if you go to the BDC Capital website, they actually confirm on their website um, that they received an exit from Darwin AI, right? So this is something that's very common with venture VCs, right? They'll say all the companies have invested in that. And then they'll also have like analytics. They're like, oh, exited this company, IPO this company, sold this company. And they're, you know, it's essentially for their LPs or people giving them money to invest in new companies to be like, hey, look, we made a bunch of successful plays. So anyways, it's funny that this whole deal was discovered because um, of like LinkedIn profiles of the original core team. And then of course, if you go to BDC Capital, you figure it out. Um, but what's interesting is, um, you know, BDC Capital, Obvious Ventures, no one, no one, you know, is really talking about this other than, of course, that, you know, you can see it on the, the LinkedIn and the website. But anyways, um, what I will say is that apart from helping with, of course, the whole being more efficient and manufacturing, Darwin AI actually uses um, this is what I think that Apple really acquired them for is they had a bunch of really interesting techniques to make AI models smaller and faster. Now, as we know, this is literally like the golden ticket in the in the age of AI is how do you make these enormous um, AI models smaller, more efficient? How do you run them on devices? This is something that Apple specifically is focusing on because they you know essentially want to be able to run AI models directly on the iPhone. Now, my assumption with all of this is that Apple, who's been very privacy focused and privacy centric, right, with kind of blocking Facebook cookies and all that kind of stuff from iPhones. And, you know, you got to notify, you got to approve apps to to use different things and you got to block apps from, you know, having certain permissions on your phone. Apple's been very heavy into privacy encryption, all this kind of stuff. And um, I, I believe that the concept they're going for here is they're going to take a company like Darwin AI, who's kind of hacked or figured out this solution for smaller, more efficient models. They're going to create their own models for doing a whole bunch of different things on the iPhone. And they'll be able to run AI models directly on your phone. And the the big idea here is of being a privacy centric company, you don't have to have this stored in a server, you don't have to send your information over to, you know, open AI or whoever else um, to get these AI responses where there could be some sort of data breach between you and them. If everything's happening locally on your device, um, the security is so much higher. So I think this is probably where Apple's going with this. Um, and a lot of people have been kind of reporting that uh, these kind of on-device generative AI features are what Apple's looking to do for iOS 18, which there is supposed to come out this year. Um, so Apple traditionally, like I've given them a lot of flack on the show and a lot of people have as well on kind of lagging or, or it seems like they've been a little bit slow on a lot of generative AI features, right? If you're, I mean, if you're just kind of comparing them to OpenAI, Google, Meta, Microsoft, all of these companies coming out with these big um, generative AI plays, it would it would look like they've been slow. Now, of course, Tim Cook said that they wanted to um, be really 
uh, you know, they want to be really thoughtful with how they did generative AI, but this is, you know, over a year after ChatGPT launched and it doesn't feel like they have any big plays in the space. So a lot of people are saying, look, they have the budget, they have the team, they have the use cases and users. Um, you know, they, they, they should have rolled some stuff out. So I think that uh, Tim Cook said that the company, so of course, Tim Cook got a bunch of pressure on their earnings call about it and he actually addressed this. And I think at this point, it's people have realized perhaps Apple is just a little bit behind the ball on this and but they're they're getting kicking into gear. Tim Cook said that they are planning to introduce a bunch of interesting AI features um, later this year. So we should be seeing this soon. Um, and he actually said on that specific uh, quarterly earnings call, quote, we continue to spend a tremendous amount of time and effort, and we're excited to share the details of our ongoing work in that space later this year, right? So should be coming very soon. And this uh, acquisition of Darwin AI, I think will play a big role in that. So last year, um, a bunch of Apple executives had, you know, said that they were making a bunch of efforts into, um, they're essentially a bunch of investments into generative AI efforts. Um, and if you look at their job listings, um, this is actually a really good way that we can kind of see like what a company is doing. It's what they're hiring for. So you go to their job listing board and you can, when Apple was working on their car, which the whole car project has now been dumped, but you could actually see they were hiring like uh, mechanical engineers and other people that traditionally weren't working on traditional Apple products. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, they're probably making some sort of car play, right? So you can actually kind of buy their patents and their job boards. You can kind of um, figure out what companies are doing. Of course, Apple's very tight-lipped, but you have to use these kind of strategies to figure out what's actually going on at Apple. So if you look at the job listings, um, a lot of them are saying that, you know, essentially giving you the idea that the company is exploring adding AI into a whole bunch of internal um, and also external areas. So I think very specifically, you could be talking about Siri, developer tools, customer support, and a lot of different areas. Um, but the key to all of this is being able to run a lot of AI models directly on iPhones and directly on laptops. This is gonna be um, huge. And so I think this is what the acquisition of Darwin AI is. I'll definitely keep you updated as we see how this rolls out. And I'll keep you updated as Apple makes the big announcements of all of the latest and greatest in AI that they'll be adding shortly to their devices. Um, they've been hinting at it. We've been seeing the rumors. Uh, they've been saying it publicly. So now it's time to see what they actually come out with.